Sandy Parker and welcome to Crafting for Almost Everyone. Well today we're going to be doing an embossing technique. It's going to be some emboss resist with watercolors. I hope you'll stay tuned for this fun card. What I wanted to do first is I die cut out a bunch of the word thanks and I wanted to get this started so that we can get them glued down and they'll be dry enough to play with when it comes to that time in the card. So the first thing I'm doing is I've already done, I, this is very inexpensive cardstock and it's also uh, my scraps. So I'll just use scrap paper like this and um, die cut out a bunch of them. I think I did five of these and I don't know how many, I think there's maybe three already glued down. And uh, I like to make sure that my last one is really um, a clean one and then I pick it up and um, adhere it. Now you can use a, a, a micro tip glue pen. I really struggle with those. As you know I just can't seem to get one that I love that everything comes out of perfectly. It just doesn't work for me. So um, I really have been buying a lot of them trying to find one that would work that I could say to all of you guys yeah this really works but what happens for me is that if you don't use it every day or a couple times a day you end up having a problem with that glue that tip my very is the very top one again you want to be clean and in my case I'm going to be using so much embossing powder on this that it will almost be like um, molten on there. Uh, I want, that's one of the techniques I wanted to show you is how to get a really thick molten -y look on your um, on your die cuts. So we're going to be working on that and then after I get this glued to its buddy here what I'm going to do is I'm going to set something on it to make it um, push it down so that it really adheres to itself because with five layers of dies die cuts, excuse me, with five layers of die cuts you really have to make sure they're well adhered to each other and that they're either offset if you want them offset or really well laid on top of each other and I was trying to make sure that mine were really just well um, well adhered on each other and I use things like the pin to go into the letters, I'm going to use this on the A because the these little spots where you have um, like some glue e oozing out. You want to get that glue out if you can. So that's what I'm going to do. Then I'm just going to take one of my glue pads, actually two of my glue pads. I'm going to lay my thanks down and hopefully it doesn't have anything sticking. I mean the top isn't sticky and it doesn't feel like it is. And then I'm going to put another on top of it to make sure that it's going to be holding it in place. So that's that part of our project. Now the next thing, these are pins I had in my uh, glue bottles and they didn't work. Then one of the things we're going to be doing is uh, I'm going to be using a really, really beautiful background stamp from Rubberneckers. It's this one. It's called Abstract Roses. I love this background stamp. I don't use it enough and as in all things you got to get using on these things, people. It's not just, you know, you don't want to just buy them like I do. you got to use them, too. And I'm going to uh, use just a 65-pound white cardstock to put on top of it. And then we're going to layer it whoa, on a 5.5-inch tall by 4.25-inch wide card base. And this is from Gina K. It's her Neutrals paper pack. Her papers are really nice, and um, they're thick and really luscious. I love this one. It's uh, I guess this is her version of craft. And then I want to, uh, what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to put, um, I'm going to layer this piece in, in amongst that. But I'm going to um, stamp it first. First thing I want to do is I want to use my little pouch, the anti-static pouch, to make sure we get any kind of prints or any kind of background that we don't want on there. We'll, it'll make sure that the powder doesn't stick. So there's that one. And then I'm going to be doing two cards today. So I'm just going to get both my papers ready at the same time. Okay. So our first step 
is we're going to take Versamark ink, it's a clear ink, and we're going to really, really well ink our stamp. Then make sure you cover the lid on there because you'll get powder on it and you don't want that to happen. And then I'm just going to, I'm going to lay it right there. If I had a problem uh, when I just laid that down and picked it back up and moved it, if I end up with a problem from that, what we'll do is we'll see that when we put our powder on it. And if we have a problem with it, all you do is you just wipe the powder off and flip the paper over and do it again. Um, that's why there's two sides of paper, so you can make a mistake on one side and go to the other. Now let's see how this looks. I think it looks pretty good. Now, again, this is when we're going to find out if it's if if I stamped it well or if I accidentally um, double stamped it in an area. And uh, you're going to pour it back into the container, so it doesn't matter if you end up getting some, uh, you know, too, putting too much on here. You want to just make sure that you do get a good cover uh, on your paper. And if you need a little bit more, you just put a little bit more on like that. And we'll just go across it again. Just to make sure, you know, you just want all of your edges to be covered, if you can. I'm going to put that aside and put my powder back in my container. And then that way it won't be in our way when we're doing our heating. You're going to warm up your heat tool, making sure your heat tool is nice and hot. Before I do that though, I, w I have a little spot here I need to clean off. You can use your micro brushes for this or um, a nice um, soft brush. But right in here, I don't know if you can see this, I have a little bit of powder I don't want. So I'm just going to blow in the areas where I have issues and try and get those off because if you have something on here, it maybe isn't going to look too bad right now, but when you heat it, you're going to see that problem. Like right in here, I have a little issue. <laughs> okay. I think that's good enough. We're going to heat it, he reheat our tool up so we get it nice and hot. I see another spot I want to clean up a little bit on there. I'm going to use my micro brush to hold this down. Start at the bottom. You're going to move it around on your paper. As soon as you see it change to shiny, you want to move it. That's pretty good. It's nice and shiny, which is what we're shooting for. And while I'm while I'm doing this, I'm going to turn off the camera and do my other one so that I have two done so we can move forward with this. So I'm going to be painting my background. Uh, I did this one already, and I'm going to show you how I did it. I have these watercolors. They're, um, they're color sheets. They're uh, really nice colors, but you can get any kind of watercolor. Any inexpensive watercolor will work for this. And I don't know anything about watercoloring. Trust me when I tell you I'm just uh, playing. But um, what I did when I, when I did this the first in the first round, I used this dark crimson color. And I just did the centers of my flowers with the dark crimson. And that's all I'm doing. And what you're going to find is that your um, embossing powder, now that it's uh, dried on there, it acts as a resist, which means that your inks, your inks, your watercolors, your any kind of um, color that you're going to put on this won't adhere on that gold part of my uh, of my project. So even it right now you can see there's some gold that has a little bit of red on it right there. That red will wipe off easily because it's not, um, it's a resist and resist means it resists it. It pushes it away basically and says, hey buddy, get off me. I don't want you. So I'm doing the reds and the centers of my flowers first and I'm not, I'm not going to be really careful about it because I want this to look kind of the, the flowers themselves are um, really scribbly, so yeah, that's a word, I think. I don't know, I'm using it. Um, 
we're going to go with the word scribbly. Anyway, the, the colors, the, the flowers themselves are like a scribbly looking flower. So, uh, you know, I don't think we need to be too careful about our coloring because uh, it's all going to be on the background in the end anyway. It's just, uh, we're going to blur them together. And our scribbly background will be also um, scribbly flowers and scribbly background. Everything's going to be scribbly. So that's that. Then I mix together uh, vermilion and burnt umber, and that's in my little palette here. And I'm going to use a bigger brush, and I'm just going to go over the background with this as much as possible. And I'm just going to kind of, I'm not using watercolor paper, and uh, I know that that other color is going to blend and blur in, as I said before, blurry. Um, so I'm not worried about that. You can kind of try to avoid it, but um, you know, avoid that background color like I'm doing right here. Um, you can kind of avoid it if you want to, but um, I went back over it on my first one with the the um, dark, the crimson color. So um, it didn't really make that big of a difference to me on the first one, so uh, it didn't. I didn't really care that it that the two colors merged and became one. And as you can see, I'm just slapping the color on. And that this section that has the two colors mixed, it has more of a red look to it. So I can go back over that with this and kind of make it go back to what I want it to be. My background paper color is going to be like a craft card stock, so it's a brown color. And um, where, do they, where do they come up with these names, craft card stock? Why don't they call it paper bag brown? That's what they should have called it, craft. I don't know. I don't understand these things. These are the things I don't get in crafting. Why don't they use words that we all understand? You know, we all understand. If somebody said paper bag brown, you'd know exactly what color that was, wouldn't you? I mean, I think I would. No, I would. Okay, so that's those colors. Then I mix together the crimson and the burnt umber to have more of a ready tone. I think that's this one. Could be different. And then I thought I would go around the this part and just lay in some of that in the in the bigger in the bigger swirl of the flower. As I said, not going for any kind of perfection, just going for something that will make the, the flower stand out a little bit and that the golds will, it, I think these reds and oranges really make that gold background pop. Before when I told you the two color mixes, that was all crimson, but it was diluted. This is the crimson mixed with the burnt sienna or burnt umber, one of the two. As I said, I know I know so much about watercoloring. I'm just showing you what uh, what somebody who knows nothing about watercoloring can do when they've got some colors and some time on their hands and some really pretty background. When you have a stamp like this, it does all the work for you. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to let that dry. Then once I let it dry, then I'm going to go back in and put some more centers of that crimson in the centers of my flower so that the flower really pops in the middle. I think it you can kind of see it in this one better. And I'll have to flatten these out too. I'll probably lay a book on this one because you can see the three different colors in this one better, I think. I thought before going to back to our uh, reddish orange tones, I would show you that you don't need to have watercolors. You can have Crayola markers, and we're going to show you how to do that. Because I want to make sure that you know that you can use whatever you have in your house, and we can make get the same results. Um, of course, I'm going to use a little bit different colors, but we're going to have the same results. I'm using a... a um, ceramic tile, but you could use uh, the back of a Tupperware container. If you have one of these boxes that you keep your supplies in, you could put it on, you could scribble on the lid of that. It doesn't really matter what you use. It's just a matter of having something you can scribble on. And so I'm going to scribble some markers. I have a really dark purpley blue color. 
I'm going to scribble that around. And then I have a little bit lighter, but same purpley. You know, it's a uh, purple. This one's much juicier than that one, obviously. Then this one is a pinky purple. And I'll make sure that I'm in the viewfinder in a second. I just want to make sure that I get a lot of these scribbled out on my on my um, tile. This is a lighter pink. And this is a darker pink. Pinkish red, we'll call it. I just wanted to do um, a variety of colors so that you can kind of mix and blend, do whatever you want. Okay. Then I'm going to use my same brush that I used before. And this is just a, a watercolor brush. It's from Royal and Langnickel. I really like these. Lindsay the Frugal Crafter recommended those for beginning watercolorists. And I love the fact that she's willing to help us learn what, what tools work best for us when you're learning uh, something new like this. I'm just kind of going to kind of sm smear these around a little bit so that I end up with one purpley color. And then I'm going to get that one color that was really juicy, which I think was this one, and put more of it around because I really like that one. This one was too. It's about the same color, a little bit lighter. So I'm going to put that over to this side. I'm going to do the centers of my flowers with these. Remember how I did the dark colors um, with my in the centers with the other watercolors? We're going to do the same thing with these. These are water-based markers, so any water-based marker you have will work for this. I'm just uh, I just wanted to show you technique. take my dryer and dry these because I want that purple to stay vivid if I can. And I'm just using now, this is the purples all really, uh, I just re-wet my, my tile so that I could um, get the, these lighter tones. thanks and I I'm gonna put it back on here and lay it down as soon as it's been heated the first time you're gonna heat it once make sure you warm up your heat tool the first time you are done with this it'll look bumpy and not perfect that's okay because we're going to be doing this 
so that we're going to be laying another layer over it. So that's our first layer. You're going to cool it down enough that you can play with it. You don't want it. You don't want to um, go after it. Like right now, if you touch it, you're going to leave fingerprints. And I don't know if you can see that. It doesn't matter because we're going to do other layers. But I just want to show you. If you touch it right afterwards, you're going to leave your fingerprints in it. I want to make sure you saw that. I want to make sure that I teach you everything you don't want to do because I've done everything you don't want to do. You also want to get as little of the powder on the back as possible because it's harder to adhere to your surface if you have it on the back of your um, of your um, your die cut. So you're going to press this in again. We're back into the the Versamark ink, and you want to push in there as hard as you can because you're going to try and get the top and the bottom and the insides of the letters. You really want to try and get as much of that dot or that ink in there as possible because that's going to make a big difference in your end result. Put the lid back on it. I'm going to put another piece of tape down. Let me put this on here first. We're going to see if we can really get it in the nooks and crannies this time. If you have um, something you can push it into, like I'm going to use my um, my little micro brush. If you have something that you can kind of, you know, push it into the powder with, that'll really help you. And then make sure afterwards that the spot that you pushed it in with is covered again. You also need to tap it off so that if you have a letter like the letter A, um, I had so much powder in there that it, there's you know, it's you can't um, see the center of the A's. And if it doesn't, if you know, if you have a spot that doesn't um, have enough powder on it, that's okay. We're gonna do it one more time. You can see it's starting to get really molten looking now, which is the look we're going for. Now it becomes more important that we don't touch it until it's cool at this point. You see, though, the difference between the first round and the second round, how now it's looking a lot more molten. It looks a lot more like lava on there instead of a powder. I really like that look. I think it really adds a lot to your background. You can, if you do this quickly enough, you can flip it over into your powder and get another layer on it if you do it right after when it's really, really hot. But I don't like to do that because I make a bigger mess doing that. So I'm just just so you know. Okay, we're going to go our last round. Make sure we get this as inked up as we can one last time. This is our last inking. I'm going to do the same with the hello, but I'm not going to show you that because I want to make sure that we have time to watch something else, you know, another technique instead of that. Okay, I'm going to heat this. Okay. Now, at this point, I'm just going to move it so you can really see it. See how really thick and molten it is? Now it's done. You can, when you can't see the layers of the, the die cuts, you know, I have five layers there. Okay, I'll show you the difference. Can you see on this one where you can see the paper layers? You won't be able to see that on the thanks because that embossing powder will make it so that it's completely clean on the top. Can you see that? It's cool, isn't it? I touched it in a little spot. I gotta reheat it. And if you do touch it and you make a little mark, go back over that spot with your heat tool and it should clean it up. But again, don't touch it if you can avoid it. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to put this card together. I put it on a brown base. Oh, almost put that on upside down. This is from Gina Kay. Love her paper colors, beautiful colors. And I thought I would do the hello. So I took my white paper and I used the crimson that I used for the darkest shades in here. And I'm going to lay that right like that. And then I'm going to take some tear tape. 
and completely cover the back of this and then I'm going to trim it down and make a really nice little um, point on the end of it but I wanted to make sure that before I did that I got my tear tape on it that piece making sure that you fold back on itself any of the tear tape that might show and then I'm going to lay my hello on it first I'm going to put this piece back on this just to make it so I can lay it on my table if I need to. Okay. So we're going to put our hello right there. And then I'm going to cut a point, or a, I don't know what you call that, uh, like a flag. Oh, everything's flying off. We're going to cut like a little flag in the end. So you're going to cut into the middle. that and then you're going to cut from both ends into the middle I like that then we're ready to stick it down I'm going to lay this down first because I know I'm going to put my hello somewhere near the bottom like that well adhered. Then we're going to use some wet adhesive to glue this down. And I don't know if you saw this, I tried not to get that molten um, lava on the back of my hello, but unfortunately I did not succeed. So we're using some wet adhesive and probably more than I normally would use, but I want to make sure that I can get this to glue on to this piece if I can. Okay, I'm not going to touch it. I mean, I'm not going to play with it. I'm going to put an ink pad on top of it and that will hold it in place while we're letting it dry. And then we'll go to our next one, which is uh, the other one of these. Oh no, sorry. I wanted to do the purple one. I layered the purple back. This is the one that we colored with our uh, our Crayolas. And I did a molten You Deserve to be Celebrated. I thought that was kind of cool. And I think I'm just going to make a strip of that. So I'm going to use my paper trimmer. And I'm just going to cut it so that just it's as tight as it can be up against the U and then the need to be celebrated. Both of them are as um, that the cutting is as close to those letters as possible. And again we're going for the big tear tape on the back. It makes it a lot easier if you do it this way because then you're sure you've got your adhesive well adhered. Your card is going to stay together when you mail it and you're not going to have to worry about somebody getting it in pieces and saying, geez, that was nice, Sandy. Thanks for sending me a card that uh, I had to put back together like a puzzle. I did the, the same molten technique with this. Okay. There's that one. So I took the leftover piece of red strip that I had from the card that I made, hopefully it's on there, from this banner. I had a little strip left over from that. So I thought what I would do is lay it below the word thanks on this card and that way um, it will offset and make the thanks really stand out and it's again we're gonna have to put something over this to hold it down so that we can be sure that our thanks is well adhered because that one is a lot um, bendier we'll call it yeah that's a word than my other one so I'm gonna lay that on there and hold it for a little bit and hopefully it will stay on there I don't want to ruin my um, my embossing. A little worried about that because of the 
glue. I think that'll hold it though. Okay, so here are our three cards finished. I really like them. I like the molten look on the words that are attached, and I like the way that the uh, watercolors really brought out the gold in the embossing on the actual background stamp. I hope you enjoyed this, that you learned a little bit about embossing and some different techniques emb with embossing. I hope you'll give this a thumbs up and subscribe. Please tell your friends about me on social media because you know I love that. And thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.